When I graduated high school, I really didn't think of myself as college material. After I graduated from high school, I actually ran a huge wall because my mom couldn't help me to uh, pay for higher education. Once I actually got back into the swing of things in community college, I found a job, I paid for the first year at community college. I actually realized that I had more potential than I thought I did. I knew I was ready. I knew I could do better. You're a community college student. You're doing well. You're starting to think about your next step. How do you go about transferring to a four-year college or university? In this video, you'll hear from the experts, students who transfer to top four-year institutions, and from college staff who help students like you find, prepare for, apply to, and get into some of the best colleges in the country. I wanted to go to a school that, that, I could, that I could do more than just afford, you know. I wanted to be in a school that was prestigious and had a good reputation. Going to a community college may have been a financial choice, may have been a choice that was dictated by family circumstances, but once a student has achieved something at that level, it's a mistake not to think about higher goals and potentially finding themselves in a place where they could really soar. I was really afraid to transfer to a private institution because I come from a very humble background. I don't come from an affluent background and a lot of that kind of scared me. I was afraid how the people were going to react when they met me. There are a lot of misconceptions. They think that's a school for rich kids, that's a school for people that are just coming from high school and have taken you know, 15 AP classes and got perfect scores on the SATs and I could never compete. And they also think that that school is way too expensive for me. It's completely out of my price range. None of that is true. When I started planning to transfer to a four-year institution, I had several concerns. One was, how am I gonna afford this? I can't pay for this. And in fact, what we have to remind them is, the more expensive colleges, particularly the private colleges, often have more funding available for financial aid. And we want the best and brightest students, so we are willing and able to invest in them. And they may, in fact, pay less to go to an expensive college like Smith than they would to go to their state university. Many institutions have special programs because they are looking to diversify their student body, so they are really reaching out more and more to community colleges and offering special scholarships, incentives for admission to attract these top performing students to their institutions. So you can fit in and afford a really great school. What steps do you need to take to make this dream a reality? The best piece of advice that I can give anyone in a community college now is to definitely build a relationship with your academic advisor and spend as much time with them as you can to go over you know, your two-year plan. Students who are looking to transfer to a top selective institution really need to plan as early as possible and they need to set a map of all of the courses that they need that will fulfill the requirements of that four-year institution. Make sure to meet with an advisor or transfer specialist at your community college as early as possible. Otherwise, you might miss required courses and or waste money on courses that won't transfer. There are some classes that I wanted to take, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't transfer to the majority of schools, so I picked a lot of classes that I was interested in and would also transfer. We're looking for a certain number of credits, very strong writing ability, very strong critical thinking skills, good work habits, good time management skills, and they need to be ready for an adventure. Work with your advisor to create a strategy. What kind of school do you want to attend? What types of courses and what majors interest you? What schools are likely to accept you? Figure out if a school is what you would call a reach school meaning that your chance of being admitted is maybe 20% or less. Or if the school is a match where you feel that most students with your numbers are admitted. Or a safety school where you feel incredibly confident that about 80% of the students with your credentials get into that school. And then, you know, apply to, to a few of each. A reach, a match, and a safety school. Maybe a few more all schools you'll be glad to attend. Once you've got a handful of colleges picked out, 
check the requirements and deadlines. Make a schedule to keep track of it all. Getting on campus, talking to students, talking to faculty and staff is really the best way to determine if the institution is a good fit for you. When visiting the, any university, including the University of Virginia, I always encourage students to visit classes. There are open classes. Students can drop in, listen to faculty members, get a feel for the academic environment. The way the professors will teach the students actually help me realize which school do I want to go or, or not. Most other kinds of experiences, colleges don't plan for you. So if you want to meet with a faculty member, you would probably have to set that up on your own. You'd probably have to call an academic department and say, I'd really like to talk to a professor who teaches courses in uh, drama or in political science. The best advice that I can give is ask questions. Don't be afraid. There's never a dumb question. People are always willing to help you, but you have to go for it. Being a Jesuit University, one of the things they emphasize. Check with your community college staff to help you plan campus tours. Some colleges even have funds available to help pay for visits. But if you can't travel to a campus, there are other ways to get information and make connections. A lot of prestigious schools would come to the community college where I went and they would all speak to us so I always got their information and always make sure to get their card and then following up later when I was doing the application process I would call them and then they would put me in touch with some professors and other members of the staff and they could tell me about the school. I go around to community colleges all over the United States and I like to get to know students and I try to develop relationships with the transfer counselors and the honors program directors so they won't feel shy about getting on the phone and calling me. Call the financial aid office when you're applying to schools and tell them that you're applying and you're very interested because they can actually waive the fees for the application. So that's what I did for all of mine. So I would have spent a great deal of money trying to apply to all these schools and that was money I didn't have. One key piece of advice, apply early. Four-year colleges often have earlier financial aid deadlines than you're used to from community college. And don't forget about the FAFSA. That's your free application for federal student aid. The FAFSA deadline varies by school, so ask each college about their particular financial aid due dates. In most cases, it's not submitting a FAFSA by that deadline, it's having a complete financial aid application. In addition to applying for financial aid, be creative in digging out scholarships. Hundreds of local businesses, clubs, and organizations sponsor college scholarships. Students who engage in uh, Phi Theta Kappa, which is the honor society for the community college students, that honor society offers many opportunities for scholarships for transfer students to complete their education. It's definitely you know, worth it to look into the whole transfer office at the school that you'd be transferring to to see what kind of programs they have for new incoming students to get involved and to meet more people. One thing that I think is really important that transfer students be aware of is the element of transfer shock that can occur. So a student can do everything right and then get to that four-year institution and really experience a difficult first semester. One of the most exciting things is to see the evolution of a new transfer student from when they arrive at the university to when they graduate. Also working with low-income students who come in hesitant, who come in a little concerned about the environment, is it going to be a good fit? I'm thinking about a student who's about to graduate from a Hoyo College who came to us from a community college in Boston, and by no means had she ever considered leaving Boston, uh, applying to a school like Mount Holyoke, but it was a counselor there who really encouraged her. And in the last few days, as I've been talking to her about her applications to MIT for graduate school, she keeps saying, what a mistake I might have made if I had just not listened and not believed in myself. This first semester, I feel like it was a life learning experience, not only academically, but also personally. Academically, I was really scared. The amount of work was way different from the community college. I talked to my professors after the semester was over. They gave me a lot of feedback, and the things that they said changed my mind, and now I know I'm ready.